Hey guys, so this is the morning after the fashion show and um, my walk was incredible. I got a lot of oohs and ahs from the audience. Um, that was excellent. Um, overall experience, I wasn't very happy. I wasn't happy with it at all. Um, and there was different reasons why. Um, I'm just like in a different place in my life now like because I've been modeling since I was 19 and it's like I modeled in New York and that's where I started and it came at a time when my self-esteem was very low like I had very like extremely low self-esteem when I lived in New York and now in my adulthood, or should I say well into my adulthood, I have a different outlook on modeling and I wouldn't have been able to kick the modeling back up if I wasn't as confident as I am today. Um, but um, the other thing, is that I'm a very, very big hearted person. And I think people notice that and they take advantage of that. And because they notice how I am, they have the tendency to, I guess like prey on me in a sense where I'm doing all this free work I'm doing just like bending over backwards, like the people are practically sitting on my lap. And that's the part where it starts to become an issue when, and like some, some people are using me by accident. I mean, I mean, because it's not something that they, I'm not like exposed to them on a regular basis in that way but they still take note of my big heart personality. So they have the tendency to see what they can get from me. Like it's like a taking advantage kind of thing. And um, whether the person has known me for years or they just met me earlier in the year or whatever the case is, people notice the big heartedness in me and the niceness and people take kindness for weakness and it was just, it was just a really bad realization on that. Um, I'm doing a YouTube episode. It's a really bad realization on like during that day, which was yesterday for my fashion show, for me to like get a different perspective. It's like looking around me and it's like nothing but, and I'm, I'm not saying everybody around me, but when you feel underappreciated and when you feel like people are taking you for granted and you feel like you're being used by quite a few people, it starts to weigh on your psyche. And one person in particular, I don't think I'll be working with that person anymore in the future, but I just feel like not only do they talk down to me right in front of my husband but they just like they try to see what they can get out of me they like they try to see every little nook and cranny every little bit and piece that they can get out of me so they can at the end of the day be the ones on top with you know, by spending very little to no money on the entire event, you know, like that kind of thing. So it just is making me just think 
about how I can change my approach in the future. Um, perhaps, perhaps I can work towards getting union-based work. So that way, when I partner up with certain people or just organizations who are in need for fashion shows, they have no choice but to hire, well, they have no choice but to pay me. Um, because people have the tendency, and it's not everybody, but it's just certain people have the tendency to, I don't know. They have the tendency to just like take advantage of people who are nice. And then on top of that, being treated as though they believe that I'm a person of a certain kind of, like a person who speaks in a certain kind of way, or I'm a person who has a certain level of intelligence or lack thereof. And people treat me a different kind of way. And that's not everybody, but they'll treat me in a certain kind of way because they think that I fit a certain category. Like they put me in a certain box. And I don't know if there's like, it's just the overall stigma of models who work for free or if it's just something about my personality that they hone in on and prey upon, or maybe a combination of both. Um, um, and I know like in any kind of job or gig, <laughs> my dog's barking. I know any kind of dog, um, <laughs> any kind of dog. I know any kind of job or gig, there's always going to be something where there's going to be like these last minute changes, last minute switch ups. And I hate switch ups. I hate them. Um, so we were practicing our walk one way, like two or three days ago. But then when the fashion show came just seconds before we were, or just like maybe five minutes before we were going to do our final, like do our walk for the show. That's when the designer had told us, oh, um, well, you're going to be walking this way. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and everyone needed a re, or many people needed a reiteration because it was confusing. And I was one of those people. Like, it, because that's not the way we practiced it. Um, the overall outcome of the show was, was decent. It was, it was good considering that last minute switch up. However, I just the overall experience, I think it could have been better organized and I also, I didn't like how, like, being kind of like, I don't want to say forced, but for a lack of a better way of saying it, let's just use the word forced. It was like I was forced to be the designer's personal assistant, you know? So that it's like that kind of stuff. Just made me feel... Like when you're for, when you're like when you're put into a position and you you pretty much have your hand tied and it's like I need the help and you're an a hole if you don't help me, you know. Kind of makes me feel like backed into a corner because all you need to do is just give me some sob story about how the world is against you and you know. And then it's like, oh, well, I can't rely on many people. And thanks, Melissa, for reminding me that I can't rely on you either. Or or thank, thank you for bringing to my attention that I also can't rely on you. So you're just like everybody else kind of thing. And then they like kind of guilt me into helping them.
So it's like everything has like a strategy of like, oh, I can, I can max out on this person, you know, like I can, because they're so helpful. So it just kind of like, it gives me a different perspective and it makes me think that I should just, I should dial it back a lot as far as my niceness goes. And I don't want to do that because I don't like making other people pay for other people's mistakes, you know? Like making people in the future that I meet, like prospects, having them pay for issues that I've had with previous like people from my past. I don't like doing that because I don't feel like I should have to like put everybody in the same boat because I haven't encountered every single person. I haven't interacted with every person in the whole wide world. So, kind of puts me in a, in a tough spot. But as a form of protecting myself, I feel like I need to evaluate the way I engage with people. And kind of makes me want to just take a hiatus from just engaging with people as a whole and just keep it just, just keep it about business. And I mean, I've been doing that. I've been doing that already and there's people I could be a bit of a loner so the people on my that I invite on my YouTube channel I don't I'm not with them all the time like the only reason why we're joined together is because of some event uh, mainly because of business so I don't know I just kind of want to take a hiatus I want to take a hiatus from people and just kind of like self-reflect and like work on my personal growth. Um, it was like, I'm bombarded with all these images. Like my husband and I were talking about it. And there's just certain things that people do that just, it gets kind of brought to my attention either by my husband or it's like this aha moment, like a revelation that I come to and it just makes me feel like, is this person really in my corner? Because they act as though they are, but are they really? It's like one of those kind of things. And then there's like, there's jealousy mixed in there. Uh, not my jealousy. I mean, sometimes it can be my jealousy, but it's mostly like the jealousy of other people. And then they behave a certain way because they're jealous, like little things like that. Like my husband's very smart when it comes to unfolding things so he's one of the thing he's one of the people that helps um well he's the main person that helps bring things to my attention and and then there's things that i picked up on that i bring to his attention and then we both you know we both have like this moment where we like kind of unpack what happened and like he sees that i have a point about something and then i see that he has a point so yeah um, the moral of this episode, I guess, would be to don't let just anybody, or don't let anybody, period, take advantage of you. And just recognize when you're extending your hand too much. Because if you notice that you're helping a lot, other people are going to notice that too. And they'll, they'll use, they'll cash out on it. Um, the other thing is get union-based work, <laughs> get union-based work. So that way, if a company or whatever, whichever entity is interested in hiring you for a gig, they have no choice but to pay you. Um, I could actually write a blog about how there's exploitation in the modeling industry um, because models don't get paid they either don't get paid with their worth or they don't get paid at all because, you know, whoever is hiring, like whichever entity or organization that's hiring, it could be a designer, it could be a, phot a photographer. Um, they just, they just want, they just want to get the job done for free. And they want that overall event that they're organizing to be a success to the level of fame or to the level of riches or both. Like they're looking for that, 
that like the photographer is looking for that money shot or that uh designer is looking for that one model that can help sell the dress just like that you know like there's always like everything's always attached to money and i think that's why this world is just so despicable when it comes to certain things and i know it's not the world it's the people and i get that um so it's just it's the people that have to make the change you know but that's just a little nugget of wisdom and just kind of where my head is at um but yeah as always i'm looking forward to spicing up your life one episode of time i'm bringing you into my drama <laughs> bringing you into the modeling world i've been a little more niche specific on this channel inadvertently but then at the same time that's what my life has been about last few days um but i'm i'm like i'm like in a new direction of the channel hopefully i can keep keep the modeling episodes going um fashion beauty um and I know some of you and a lot of you probably want to see hair videos. I know I, I had it, my husband blew it out for the fashion show. So now I just have it kind of up. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for now. All right, I'll see you guys. All right, bye. It just gets tricky when you're a model and you're trying to take every gig that's handed down to you or offered to you because you're going for exposure but then when you do land a gig it's not always going to be that that money making gig it's not always going to be that one that's like this, if it wasn't for this gig, you wouldn't have been discovered by Forever 21 and have this huge partnership with them. Or if it wasn't for this little amateur gig, then H&M wouldn't have discovered you. You know, like that, that bridge that you needed to help get you to that optimal level that you're striving for. And it feels pointless for me to take these amateur gigs that will lead me to nowhere. <laughs>